Hi, we're Tim and Pam Beebe from Compassion's Call Ministry, talking about our past just a little bit. And we both grew up in a, a Christian home, but in my personal experience was that I lived a real, real shallow life. I was, I accepted the Lord when I was about 12 years old, but did not walk the life at all. I just went through high school, and then when I graduated from high school, I just totally walked away from the Lord, really. I would say that I was a Christian, but I really didn't act like it. Basically, just completely walked away. And I grew up uh, with a mom who was Catholic, and my dad was Presbyterian, and neither one of them went to church, but they did make sure that all of us children went to church uh, every Sunday. Um, I didn't really know the Lord in depth at that time until uh, in my teenage years when I was 15 my brother who was 17 was in a um, fatal car accident and somebody had witnessed to my mom uh, who led her they led her to Christ she was a Christian and then she started talking to me about the Lord and bought me a, a Bible my sister also then accepted the Lord and then later down the road just a little I had a friend that had muscular dystrophy who was 21 years old and passed away and when I went to his calling hours, the pastor there sang a song, I'll See You in the Rapture, and I asked about that pastor's church and was invited to that service, a uh, service at their church. And when he gave an altar call, that's how I met the Lord. Um, I had also gone through a, a really bad marriage, abusive marriage, and Tim and I worked together at the hospital, and I had known him. I went through this divorce, and we, we uh, started dating after the divorce was final, and the Lord uh, just had something very special for us in our future that at that point we didn't know. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Wabuzuski, co-host of Crossing Past Television. I'm here with the founder and host, Don Reed Sr., and we're back here with Tim and Pam Beebe, uh, who had shared a lot of their testimony, a lot of your upbringing, how you grew up around the church. Um, but even as in this Christian environment, you still had various trials and tribulations, and uh, you both had went through divorces. Yours was abusive. It was really uh, an ugly situation. But God had brought you two together after this, really to give you a, a brand new start and to bring you into great things and to, to the things that He has for you. Um, so, but at some point, you guys also had to recommit your lives, and we didn't get into that. Uh, so, uh, Pam, you want to share a little bit how you recommitted your life? Uh, yes. So. Well, I had gone through some, some trials, like you had said, and yeah. uh, when I met Tim in the hospital, we started dating, and um, I continued back at church. I, I started bringing him into church, and, um, you know, I had never really stopped loving the Lord mm -hmm. going through that time. There was a, a two-year, I believe, time that um, I was just embarrassed to go back into the church because I didn't know how people, you know, you're not supposed to get divorced. Yeah, and, yeah. and so, um, but they didn't, a lot of them didn't know what I was living with um, in the abusive situation. So um, I had never really stopped loving the Lord, but when Tim and I got married and I invited him to go to church with me, I, I just recommitted my life. Great. You, so you know, were already saved. You I was already saved, but yes. Tim was not born again or maybe not you weren't sure of your I, was, I wasn't sure I yeah. made a commitment when I was around 12 or 13 at a summer camp and uh, but really once I graduated high school was not living the life I was out partying with my friends mm -hmm. and, and just not living the life that would show any fruit of being a Christian so really was when we met was the best thing that ever happened to me not only that I found my future wife, but uh, that I recommitted my life to the Lord once we started to going to her church. And that's really where I knew that uh, we had talked about a little bit about in Deuteronomy where the Israelites, Moses was talking to them and they were getting ready to go into the promised land. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you have a choice here. You can choose death or you can choose life, choose life. And at that point, once I met her and started attending her church, I chose life. And, probably, and I never looked back from that you, point. You probably forward. saw something in her too, you know, you know, the Christian true 
person that recommitted their life, you know, because, and, man, and there's a lot of people out there going through divorce that sometimes the churches will kick you out or, or you can't go to heaven because of some of the false doctrine teachings like that. You have, to, you have to come back to that church, you know, and that's a, that's a tough time for couples that have got divorced. You know, you find somebody, some of your best friends sometime leave you in church, whatever, right? Right. And, and, and yes. then when you said that, it's like I said, you know, you still have to be born again. You know, you can, a lot of people say prayers. I said a lot of time with uh, Billy Graham when I was drunk, but I never done anything about it until I finally really committed my mm -hmm. life to the Lord. So, so do you, right? Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're right. I saw something in her that was a commitment more so than I had ever done before. More so than just saying the words, it was more a lifestyle, and that's really what- The relationship what really began it, with Christ at this time. At this time. Right, yes. and, yes. Your, and your past was now, you said God can take the, the terrible things of the past and use them for good, exactly. not that he wanted them to. Exactly, that's, that's yeah. scripture. He turned what, what the, the enemy intended for harm, uh, God turned that around for good. And I have to say that there was nobody at or at the church that, you know, shunned me or anything. That was all my own self-talk. You yeah. know how you, you're just embarrassed because you went through that. And so it was a, a healing process for me. But, sure, sure. But it was a new beginning then when Tim committed his life as well. And God had such great plans for us that we didn't even know about at that time. Yeah, so you, you join, you're a member of this great church and this church is going on a mission trip and you guys decide to go. Yes. And that opened up doors that you had no idea what was coming. So talk a little bit about that. Yes, in uh, 2004 was uh, the first mission trip we had signed up for and it was to El Salvador. And uh, it was a very uh, interesting experience because we didn't know what to expect. But we, we laid down our money, so to speak, and said, Lord, you're going to have to provide because we don't have the funds to do this. And uh, we both worked in home care, a home oxygen company, and we had the opportunity to bonus. And the Lord provided a bonus that met the total need by more than $2. So we had a dollar a piece to share uh, yes. on the trip. <laughs> but it was more than that. It was more, more than... It was just him showing it's us. Confirmation that confirmation. You're, you're on the right path. He's a God more provide. than enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes. So we only had the first two hundred dollars to put down, but it was a couple thousand dollars. So we had to to bonus. I mean, we didn't have to, but that's how mm -hmm. God made it work. We bonused at work and had two dollars left over. Yeah. And what happened on the trip? Did it was just awesome. It was yeah. an eye opener and God, we knew God was starting to work in our lives, something with missions. And at that point we thought maybe he was just saying, okay, every year when the church goes, you know, I, we want, I want you to commit to doing this every year. And we thought, yeah, we'll do that, Lord. And um, it was the next year we, we were uh, promised, you know, to go back and we did. The next year in 2005, we went with a team back to El Salvador. But it was during that trip that God spoke to us in a, they have a prayer fortress there. It's 24 seven prayer. Wow. And we went up into that prayer fortress and prayed and God spoke individually to both of us hmm. that he was calling us into missions. And full this time, is full, full time. time. Wow. Yes. And, and, and this was the country we were to serve in so, at that time. So you don't have a sour, you're, you're going on faith? We're going on faith, yes. Exactly. Yes. Well, didn't you come about some good friends of ours recommended you? Larry and, Larry and Sally Pfeiffer. Yes. What, a, what a couple they are, right? Yes, yeah. and, and they uh, have been on that trip as well. They've they been have. in El Salvador. Now, do you yes. go to their church? Or yes, we do. And, and, and that's a good church. I know that, uh, the name of it is uh, Victory, the, Christian Heck, Center. Victory Christian Center. They're, yes. they're, they're expanding. In fact, we had a pastor on it starting one over in Boardman, Ohio, yes. I think. Yeah, yes. Mark uh, Pastor Cooper. Mark Cooper, yeah. yes. So do they support you too as far as? They support us and uh, we have a very interesting story about when we first went on the field, uh, talking about God's provision once again. We had uh, two homes actually for sale and one car for sale, correct? And we were getting close to the point, about six months away from being released to go to the field. Because you were going to be missionaries under the Assemblies of God. Assemblies yes. of God. And they have That's a lot of stipulations that you have to meet. Exactly. You, you have to be almost debt-free to go yeah. with the you Assemblies of God. You can only owe $100 a month, and mm -hmm. we were 
and well um, over that. <laughs> and so I had sent out letters to my aunt uh, in uh, Washington D.C. area, among other people. among other people. Mm -hmm. And my cousin walked in, who had a large sum of money to send to a uh, evangelist in Arkansas. He had missed the deadline, looked at the letter, and says, "I'll send it to them." And his money was enough to clear us to go to the field. And at that point, two of our houses and a car sold within two and a half weeks. Wow. And we were off to the <laughs> and you were, you, She thought you were at least six months. At, at least. least. And I had, she had, I taken had just another taken job. a job at the hospital. I'm a nurse, and I had just taken the job at the hospital thinking, this is how we'll pay that debt off. And this is, you know, we've got to... We've got to, you know, work harder and use our own money, which they don't recommend to do, but we wanted to get to the field. Yeah. So I took this new position, but lo the Lord had a different plan. Wow. And we had there. this large sum, sum of money come in. Uh, it was a cousin that I had only met once. Tim hadn't seen him in probably 15 years. Wow. But the letter that we sent to his aunt, who his cousin's right. mom, he read that and had this money put aside yeah, God has a way of orchestrating things so beautifully and really so awesome. intricate. Like there's so many little details that He's able to put them together to get you what you need when you need it. Right. To exactly. Do his work. We so. couldn't exactly. we couldn't even figured out all the plans that He had for us up yeah. to that point. Mm -hmm. But it was just wonderful. Yes. So, so that's yes. when you started full time missions. Yes. And that was in 2005 or 2008, 2008 actually, so because three, it okay. took us yeah. about. 18 months okay. to pay down our debt sure. and do everything, raise. We had a, a, a mountain of paperwork you have to go through background checks yeah. and health checks and all of that kind of thing. So it took a long time to, to get to that point. Yeah. But uh, it was 2008. We went off to Costa Rica first. We, uh, it was a mandatory thing. You had to go learn Spanish. So we tried our best. It was probably the toughest eight months of our lives. Whoa, yeah. Even with college, it was harder than that. So we uh, did go to Costa Rica and learn Spanish and then off to El Salvador in, was it 2009? Yep. Yes, and we stayed there. We ministered there for about four and a half years until the Lord led us down a different path, called us back to the States. And... Um, got our own nonprofit through the help of Don Reed. And um, now we have our own ministry, Compassion's Call, and we minister to other missionaries and ministries all over the nation. So he really found a place for you. Because yes. when you get called, you're like, well, I don't know anything about that hardly. I've done it once. What do you want me to do? <laughs> right. you know? I feel a lot right. of people, when they get their call, they're like, well, I'm not qualified for that. And I imagine you guys felt that way. Exactly. Yeah, then you were called in the field. So what, how, what was the experience like whenever you finally get to El Salvador and your full-time missionaries? Did stuff just kind of fall into place? Or did you feel at home? Or was it a learning curve? Or how did it, how did that work out? It, it's, it's a learning curve as far as because you've got more differences because you don't know the language mm -hmm. real well. So there's so many things you want to present to people, to share the gospel with people. And it's difficult sometimes because you don't have the vocabulary to do mm. it. But the Holy Spirit is always faithful and he always gave us the right words at the right time to share. Mm -hmm. and, and mainly we worked in medical fields and with children, children's ministries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was an opportunity that, through Compassion Ministries to mm -hmm. be able to share the gospel. And that was much, much easier for us, mm -hmm. much more what our hearts right. well, were Well, yeah, you already were both in the medical field. Right. So right. God, God, he really found a place where you still would fit in, where the void was exactly. in the missions field, where you had skills, and now you just had to expand upon that to reach the exactly. lost. Exactly. And through those services, you're able to evangelize and reach the lost and, and bring exactly. in. Exactly. Every yeah. medical clinic that we did there, um, we were able to minister the word. In fact, the people that came into the clinic, although it was a free clinic, they would not get their medicine on the way out the door until they were counseled and, and they heard about the Lord and uh, we had Bible students praying with yeah. them. And if they don't accept the Lord, then they don't get their medicine. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it wasn't kidding. really no, that, not quite but, that bad. But. but they did hear the message. At least yeah. the seed was planted and what Holy Spirit did with that was up to him. But many yeah. people, I will say, did commit their lives Absolutely. to the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were looking for hope and we, were, we had the message of hope. Yeah. 
So then he calls you, you just felt in your spirit that your time was up there, you came back. Uh, yes. And you touched on it now, you, you're still missionaries, but you're around here more often. Yes. And you go to various places, you're not really set in one place. Yes, I, I think the Lord was speaking to me maybe before Tim, and at the time, my mom was was 87 and I had dementia, was in a nursing home and, and her health was declining. My sister, who was just two years younger than I, was battling cancer and not doing well. And, and I just felt that the Lord was saying, it's time to move back home, spend time with your family, and, and then he would show us from there. We always mm -hmm. count on him to direct. So uh, that's what we did. We started wrapping things up in El Salvador to move back home. I did lose both my mom and my sister four days apart wow. before we even made it back to the States, although he did allow me uh, a whole month to spend with them prior to their death, which i it's a blessing to me. Um, but that's, that's just where, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you guys, speaking to you guys earlier, you talked about how now he's really putting you in places to, to plant new uh, missionary groups in various locations where there isn't any. So like yes. there's different voids in different countries yes. and he's kind of bringing you in to help show people how to do it. Yes, other you know? missionaries. Right. Yes. right, yeah, we're coming alongside other missionaries that have never had teams yeah. and never had any other direction other than you know, what they're learning on the field also. So we can go with them and be a resource to them, mm -hmm. not yeah. only spiritually, but, but with the knowledge in, that we've learned through the different Building times. relationships, and some of them are, are already, have been on the mission field, and but we're just there to sort of lift their arms because yeah. we know from the other side you know, the help you need from, from this side. Or even so, direction, where to go. Exactly. Right. You said there's two places mm -hmm. you're going, I believe, next month, right? We are. Now, those so. are two missionaries that we actually saw graduate from Bible school in El Salvador, and now they have their own, their missionaries, one in India and one in Cambodia, and we are able to be their first help, wow. so to speak, on the field. So we are uh, next month going to Cambodia for 10 days and then India. Some of these countries, you know, maybe I missed it or something here, but you're going into a foreign country, you have you running into demonic forces like the demons that we aren't talked about. Have you encountered some of that situation? We did very strongly. We took a trip to uh, Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong, strong Buddhists. Witchcraft and all? It, it, yes, just about every, we, we actually had the opportunity to go even into a, a Buddhist temple and to see the despair on the people's faces. Mm -hmm. they, they just, they were going through a ritual with no hope for a future. Mm -hmm. And it, it just saddened us. And, and all we could do really is stand outside pray. and just pray. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, because there was actually no communicating with them as far as language went. Uh, and it just was you know, our spirits had to be lifted up just to be able to handle seeing them going through motionless wow. uh, rituals, really, and, and with no hope. And that you could see on their face there was no hope, wow. you know, so it was difficult. You know, that's right. We, know, we, we have today the demonic spirits that are so bad in this country mm -hmm. that you see what they're going out there killing people like you know, Florida or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that isn't just in, in in other countries. We have the demonic spirits right flowing in this world here because, yes. and we have to, and the only way that we can possibly face it is not just by doing the church or being good. We got to get into the word of God. Exactly. The man that got yes. delivered from the demon, remember? Mm -hmm. That he went and Jesus delivered him and then and he's all said, oh Lord, I want to go with you right now and, and be wherever you be and do what you want to do. What did Jesus tell him? No, he said, you go home and tell what great things the yes. Lord's done for you, mm -hmm. see? And a lot of people who are getting involved in ministry today, I'm sorry, they're not called into it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and that's why we have to, thank God you've got a church like Victory there that is behind you and yes. supporting you. There's many churches that have no mission whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Crossing Pass takes 10% of our income and we support other missions, other ministries, okay? Yeah. Crossing Pass is nothing but a ministry to get the people out to the church. We're not a church, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe that God has blessed us since Mark come on board with me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just can't, get, I get amazed because when people are not hearing God's word today, mm -hmm. you know, you, 
the work is right here in this town too. Yes. But yeah. now we send them out. Yes. There's so many people who are bound by other religions that aren't true, but they, ju they just need somebody to go in there and reach them. And that, that's why I do love missions. And to go into places, places you mentioned where they're not allowed to go in there, mm -hmm. we need to find a way to go in there. Exactly. Because, you know, the Bible talks about how we're supposed mm -hmm. to go into all the nations, all of yes. them, right. and yes. reach all the people. It should be, everybody should be able to hear the gospel. And it's interesting because we do have friends or family who will often say, how can you go there? Because they're afraid. Sure. We refuse to live in fear. And our answer to them is, how can you not? Mm -hmm. How can you not want to go in and, and right. spread the gospel or give hope to those that are hopeless? You know, one of the missions that God called me was been to Israel 14 times. The first thing people say is, it's safe. It's safer over there. You see, when there's one killing in Israel, the whole world knows about yes. it. But there's 10 in a city here in Newcastle in, in a week. Yeah. Right. And you don't hear and about don't that. Hear. Exactly. But even if it's not safe, you don't love your life unto death. You know, no. we talked about it before. Like so many people are just living for this life, for this now, for the pleasures yes. of yes. this world. Yeah. You know, you yes. sit on a beach just relaxing. You know, what? what's the benefit of that? This exactly. life is but a vapor. Exactly. has no eternal, uh, you know, there's nothing eternal about it. There's really no purpose for it. Exactly. But to go out there and say, we have the truth and we can yes. bring it to these people. Yes. yes. Is it dangerous? Yeah. Possibly. Could be. Yes. But so what? There's nothing better exactly. than, than setting people yeah. free yes. from when, the bondage of the devil. And we giving lived them. in El Salvador and it was, it's, I believe it's the number one murder capital of the world. world. Mm -hmm. Per capita. Yeah. Yes, but you know, and our kids were held up at gun. We, our two youngest children mm -hmm. were with us and they were young, but yeah. they did street ministry too. I, you know, like I told people, we were called to the mission field. Our kids were called as well and they were held up at gunpoint and stuff. But. You know, God's faithful. We prayed and prayed and prayed mm -hmm. protection, and we just will not let fear rule over our lives. Yeah. Greater is he who's in us than he who's in the Absolutely. world. So what do we have to fear? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, thing, yeah. the thing it is, that I don't think a lot of churches will even have, they don't even have missions, you know. And, and I'm not knocking churches because we are the church, you yes. know. Yes. But yeah. I'm just, I encourage, and time has run out here so fast, I encourage pastors out there to support, you know, since some of your, God will bless you. I mean, uh, we all know that, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, since my time is running out here and trying to close this program, I, 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 we are supporting ministries, our ministries, and I've seen, and I've dealt with demonic spirits in my life because of my own particular life, and I've dealt with them, them across from my desk with men who are drinking and sexual perversion and problems, and so I know it's real. Mm -hmm. But God is real, right? Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage people out there to take a good look. Do you have a telephone number you could just look in that camera and give it to me where they could reach you? Sure. You could reach it and can't look. Our camera. phone number is 330-788-1198. Or we have an email as well, ptbeebe -E -E at gmail.com. Right, and your name of your ministry again? Compassion's Call. Okay, and you're a section 401c3, which I think yes. I set up for yes. years yes. ago, whatever, right? Yes. Tremendously. Okay, you see, we crossed paths through a very wonderful couple, you know, Larry and Sally there. But the, the, the settle it down is that there's a mission right in this town. There's a mission for him on his job. He, uh, he's a businessman, and so am I, right? Yes. I have a mission right across from my desk, and I'm a CPA so, firm, you know that. and. I got now three to four thousand clients, and I remember years ago when I first got saved by the, one of the people that was doing tax returns said, "Boy, you ought to be a preacher, and you got such a good testimony." And I said, "Well, I believe in maybe the word, but I said I'll check it out with God first. You know what God told me? He said you got a church right across from your desk. Yes, mm -hmm. And then that's when I had one client, me. <laughs> and today I got three to four thousand clients. Wow. And I always say out there, I got their W two, they're trapped." <laughs> they, can't, they, they can't leave, you know, so they've got to listen to me. And I've never had one person turn me down in, in, in all the years that I've been in business, over 50 years, except one, I think, when she said, come in, she said, I found a perfect church. And I said, well, if you join, it won't be perfect anymore. And I don't think she ever come back, you know. I mean, I'm serious, very religious, but no relationship. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, out there, I'm telling you today, people, I don't preach religion. I have never had it. The religious spirit is one of the hardest spirits that we're dealing with today, okay? Absolutely. You know yes. what I'm talking about, all the killing spirits and this and that, okay? I deal with what Jesus tells me, where you said you've got to be born again. 
Yeah. And that has happened to me and Mark and you two here. Yes. Uh, we're not religious. We have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've said this a hundred times. I wouldn't change my life today for Las Vegas, where they lost mm -hmm. my motel, or took my motel. Thank God they took my motel. Praise the Lord, dear Lord. Thank you for taking my motel. <laughs> I wouldn't be here today, right? Yeah. Because I was like you. But it was missionaries, too, that I would listen to, turn the TV on, or TV programs or like ours. But where are you at today? That's what I'm interested in. Do you know Jesus? You say, well, I think so. Then you don't know him. You should say yes right away. Mm -hmm. and, and get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's all I can say, people. It's, it's, it, God is not one who's going to, tomorrow you're going to make a mistake. So what? It's over the hill. I always say, it's like Niagara Falls. God puts all your sins in a bushel basket and goes out in the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And the next day, a little bit more and a little bit more. And the basket is still going out maybe daily. We're Christians under construction is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Do you know Jesus? We have a telephone number, 724-981-7777 or 1-855-981-9777. Call that number. There'll be somebody that'll lead you to the Lord. If you want a Bible, we'll send you a Bible. We've given over 40,000 Bibles away in this ministry since I've been born again than 20, 40 years ago. God bless you right now. Tell somebody, call up and say, I want to be saved right now in this telephone. God bless you. We love you. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. <laughs> it's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airway. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.